want to look at the given the derivative of g of x, we want to know everything we can about the original function. So this is this graph here is of g prime of x. And what do we know? Well, we actually know uh, quite a bit. So let's go through it. Um, we know that at this point, at this point, our derivative uh, is zero, so it's a critical point. And uh, before that critical point, our derivative function is positive, and then it's negative, and positive, and then it's negative. So in both of these cases, you know, we're going to have a local max. So we have a max when x equals negative 2 and then 4. And then our other critical point right here, when our derivative is, is 0, it goes from being negative to positive. So the slope is negative to positive. So that means we're going to have a local min. So when it has a max of x equals 2, so when the derivative has a max, when g prime is a max, we know that g of x is going to have a point of inflection. There's going to be a point of inflection when x equals 2. There's also going to be a point of inflection down here. So, point of inflection at x equals 2 and at x equals negative 1. Now, I, I made a mistake. This, this local min here, that was at x equals 0, not negative 1. So, this should be 0 right here. G of x has a maximum at x equals negative 2 and 4. It has a minimum at x equals 0. It has a point of inflection at x equals 2 and negative 1. And then we can look at the, uh, whether g prime of x is increasing or decreasing. So everything in red, g prime of x is increasing. And when g prime of x is increasing, we know that the, the function itself, g of x, is going to be concave up. G of x is concave up for the interval negative 1 to 2. And for all the green, where G of x is decreasing, whenever uh, my derivative function is decreasing, so all these green sections, when the derivative function is decreasing, we know that the original function is concave down. So g of x is concave down for negative infinity to negative 1 and 2 to infinity. So therefore, uh, from this graph of derivative, we were able to get lots of information about the original function. We were able to find where the x values for the local maxes, mins, points of inflection, when g of x is concave up, and when g of x is concave down. And um, th this may seem like a big step for, for some of us right now, but we are going to, uh, in the next slide or two, try to, try to consolidate um, all of our understanding between the function, its derivative, and the second derivative in a nice, nice chart. First though, let's just you know redo what we looked at in the last video. Um, I had you guys do this. What we were looking at was when our second derivative was greater than zero. And just as a reminder, this was our second.
second derivative, which is our first derivative, which is our actual function. And what we found out is when our second derivative was greater than zero, so we have that in red, uh, what's going on with the derivative function? Well, the derivative function would increase it. We saw that right here. And what was going on with f of x? Well, it was concave up. So if my second derivative, if the second derivative is greater than zero, then f prime of x is increasing. the other statement, which is if f double prime of x is less than zero, then f prime of x is decreasing the opposite, and f of x is concave down. So there's, there's a big relationship between uh, the function, its derivative, and the second derivative. Another look at this picture, which you saw before. Um, the idea being for us to conceptualize the second derivative, the first derivative, first derivative of the function. So if we have the second derivative being greater than zero, the second derivative is the, is the derivative of the first derivative. So if it is greater than zero, then my first derivative must be increasing. So my second derivative is the slope. Positive, which means that my first derivative must be increasing. And you see that here. Uh, this is a graph of f of x. So my slope is increasing, and that corresponds to having a function that concave up. So we could add to one that f of x is concave up. And that's what we were just talking about last slide. Uh, likewise, if the second derivative is less than zero, that means um, remember that f double prime is the slope of f prime. So if it's less than zero, that means f prime has a negative slope, so it must be decreasing. And you can see that the slope is decreasing. And when that slope is decreasing, as we see here, that corresponds to something being concave down. So f of x is concave down if f prime is decreasing, or similarly stated, if the second derivative is less than zero. Okay, so um, let's start drawing a picture here of of what's going on. And, and what we have is, is a function here, which is f of x, and a couple major points, we call this, you know, x equals a, b, and c. So this is, the, this is the summary chart, so let's start filling it out. Um, we know that Increasing. The other thing that we know is that the if the function is increasing as it is in these green sections right here, when it's increasing, um, we have a positive slope. In all those cases, we have a positive slope. So f of x is increasing when f prime of x, which is our slope, is greater than zero. And 
that's what we can say about that. So, what else? Uh, FX has a local max. We learned it has a local max when the, the first derivative of x. Remember, it has a local max. We've got a positive slope, negative or a zero slope, and then a negative slope. So, uh, f of x has a local max when the derivative goes positive to zero, negative. So, so we, what we can do is we say, well, here's a local max right here. And so at that point, our derivative needs to be positive zero to negative. So where we have the local max, it's going to need to be something like that. Similarly, uh, even though it's not on this chart, there's going to be a local min when f prime of x goes from negative to zero to positive. And we have a local min right here, so we know that we're going to go negative zero positive, so something like that. What else do we have? Um, well, let's skip to when, well, let's do an extra point. f of x is going to give up, but well, we were just looking at that in the last slides. f of x is going to give up when our first derivative is increasing. And that's one way. Or when the second derivative of x is greater than zero. And where is it going to give up? Well, it's going to give up during this blue section section right here, where it's going to give up. So we know that uh, during from, from B to C, my function, my first derivative function must be increasing, and my second derivative must be greater than zero. Uh, well, what else do we have? Uh, the last one, f of x has an inflection point or a point of inflection when Prime of x has a max or min, and we also we can also have an inflection. Well, another way of seeing the inflection point is when our second derivative of x goes from negative to zero to positive, or from positive to zero to negative. So now let's now let's fill in our graphs of f prime of x and f double prime of x. And we know the point of inflection is occurring, visually we can see it's occurring next to this b right there. That's when it goes from concave down to concave up. So we get, we're going concave down to concave up. Uh, but we're having a point of inflection. We know that f prime of x has to have a max or a min. Right? In this case, it'd be a min. So we have a min of b. Know that uh, while f of x is concave up, f prime of x is increasing. So if we look at f prime, so it's going to be increasing here that whole time. And while it's concave down, f prime of x is decreasing. Well, what else? So now we have a picture of f prime of x. Now, as we look at f double prime of x, where there's a point of inflection, right here. Where there's a point of inflection, um, f prime of x is going to be zero, and when it's when the f of x is concave up, this blue this blue section, when f of x is concave up, this blue section here, we know that if f of x is concave up, the f double prime of x must be greater than zero. So um, we can also look like that, and when it's concave down. This black section, it's going to get down, our second derivative must be less than zero. So now we've got, uh, we've got a, a nice picture of 